We are so proud and happy to receive Marie Dariusek here at uh, the Global Square uh, venue. Uh, she is the author of this book that we will discuss, of course, and uh, you had some troubles getting here. I'm, I hope you're not too distressed. No, I'm okay, I'm okay. It's okay, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Warm welcome. Thank you for coming. And the water is finished. Okay, but we, we well, will coffee. manage. We are strong, independent women. Absolutely. We can do this. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So, warm welcome to you. Uh, you. We have a stage here where we primarily discuss global issues. We talk about the focus on the climate crisis. We have different uh, conversations around the SDGs, etc. What we often come back to in those conversations is, of course, the role of humanity. And like, who are we as in this time of the Anthropocene? What can people and what can individuals how can we navigate in this ocean of despair, I would say. Mm -hmm. And in your amazing novel, it's called Avikt Hav uh, in Swedish, uh, and it's just been published at uh, Nordstedts, and I think there will also be book signing afterwards, and, and uh, you can get your own copy. In this book, um, a lot of the scenery takes place actually on the vast ocean or, or on, on the small ocean of, of, <laughs> of uh, uh, the Mediterranean. Uh, Mediterranean. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Can you uh, share a little bit about mm -hmm. the, the in, um, existential pretext mm -hmm. of this book? Um, my, my parents are from the middle class, uh, working class in France. And uh, it's precisely this class that goes or went on these huge cruise, you know, the big boats. And uh, my mother, now she's a, uh, she doesn't work anymore, and she insisted uh, that I come with her, with the kids. It's so child-friendly, it's so nice with the kids, etc. At some point, for diverse reasons, I said, okay, let's go. <laughs> and I, 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 I went on this huge cruise uh, along the Mediterranean Isle, my kids were so happy. They were young teenagers at that time. And for once, you know, they didn't have to go to museums, theaters, etc. They, they could have as, have as much junk food as they wanted. They could go to the nightclubs of the huge boat, etc., etc. And, uh, and in a way, it was very nice, of course. And all of a sudden, we crossed. Uh, we were going down along, the, along Italy toward Tunisia at that time. And uh, we were just crossing by Lampedusa. Lampedusa in uh, 2013 was the name of what was happening, was the name of the mass migration. What I don't want to call a crisis. Um, it's not a crisis. Mass migration is something that has always existed and that is going to happen more and more and more in between causes because of wars, but mostly because of climate change, I think. So, so Lampedusa, and I was on this crazy boat, which was like the symbol of, um, of late capitalism, of what capitalism produces that is most absurd, and in a way, most equalitarian, because for European middle class, it's really fake luxury that can be affordable to anybody, to my parents, basically. So, and we were, you know how it is on these boats, we were wasting so much food, so much gas, so much water, etc. And I thought, what would happen if we, if we went across these little boats full of migrants and refugees? And it was just, it's like that, that novels are born, you know, on those very simple ideas. And after that, when I came back home, I checked on the internet and I saw that at that time, twice it happened that one of those big boats, a, a captain, a, a, a romantic perhaps captain, idealistic captain stopped to take on board the refugees. Once it was 300 people coming on board with all these middle-class Europe people going on a holiday. And the shock of, of the differences of destiny, you know, it's so, it's both absolutely tragic, surreal, and Romanesque. And uh, the book started like that. And, and also, I, was, I wanted to imagine a character, her name is Rose. Again, middle-class woman in Paris, 
Her husband is in real estate agent. She's a psychologist, and they are precisely this class in Paris that they cannot they cannot afford Paris anymore. Paris has become too expensive. The rents, etc. And so uh, they are in their daily routine of trying to make ends meet, and uh, and they love Paris, and they like their life. And the refugees are coming and coming and coming more and more in Paris, which is what I, what I witnessed. And she doesn't want to. She she doesn't want to see it. She, she she's she feels very awkward with all this. She has her own problems, and she's not a political head at all. She doesn't want to get involved, even less committed. And so she tries to escape, in a way, the planet as it is. And uh, and it's it's the story of this woman who doesn't want to get committed, but in the end she. She, al she always has this choice, but she decides to be, she has this song in her head. We, I had that song in my head when I was writing the book, David Bowie. We can be heroes just for one day. We can be heroes just for one day. And she decides one day <laughs> to be a hero, a little hero. She does this, she gives to a young refugee who, who looks so much like her own son. They are 16, basically, these boys. One is blonde, one is black. They, they come from so different, different places. She has this impulse to give to the young refugee the telephone of her boy, of her teenage boy. And can you imagine? I have teenage children stealing their phone to give them to a refugee. And of course, the young boy, the teenage boy, so, uh, her son is very much a political head. He wants to save everybody. He wants to save the planet, etc. Not with his phone, you know. <laughs> so, so I hope the book is also. We we are in a very difficult situation on this planet, but it's not that tragic. There are also, and I, I of course I. I, I worked with some refugees at that time. I had some refugees home, and it's always more comic that it could appear. It's um, it's difficult. It's really we are all very tired of of living on this planet in a way. But I hope when I write, I always try to make the comic aspect, the day-to-day -day aspects, the routine. You know, uh, when you have a, a young refugee home. Um, he is, first of all, he's a teenager. He will not think about, um, you know, uh, washing the, the floor after his shower, you know, about taking out the water. That, no, because he's just 15 or 16. 15 people don't do that. <laughs> so, so, and she's a mother and she's trying to cope with, with another teenage boy. And it's, it's, that, it's that simple and it's that complex in a way. It is truly a book about uh, heroism in a way, and it, it has many facets to it. Because as you're saying, you can, you can feel Rose's sort of uh, reluctance. Yes, she's <laughs> very she's reluctant. She's trying to cope by di being disconnected. And then in one, like a, s some, a moment, just a strike of, of eternity <laughs> hits her, and, and she makes a choice. I was also uh, fascinated about the relationship between her and, and her husband and her, her family, of course, and the existential sort of journey that she's on w during this cruise. And her husband, in, in the translation, I don't know exactly what it would be in English, but he says something about her not... Her, her husband says that Rose doesn't really take what she has in her hands. She doesn't really grasp the moment, and that's... Mm -hmm. Uh, it struck me so, uh, ex like on a deep level, because it's so interesting to, especially we are the same age. In this age, we start thinking about: Have I done the right? Have I, have I grasped? Have I, I captured life in a sense? So that kind of a critique or or observation from someone who is so close to you is very very tough to deal with. Mm -hmm. Could you share a little bit about that um, specific image? Um, when I write, I rely on um, on feelings and intuitions, and uh, much more than on um, 
uh, logical thinking, you know, and uh, and in politics too, uh, I'm I'm not very good uh, in theory. I'm not very good at explaining the world. I, I'm better at trying to describe um, feelings. Let's let's put it that way. And and uh, she has something in the, in her hands. This woman, she has something that she has never developed in a in her career or even with her kids. Um, she, she has, I'm very fascinated by, um, in my homeland, Basque country, in the southwest of France, we have these people, and I'm sure you have them also in Sweden, these people that, that take the fire off, as we say. When you, when you are burnt, you, you can go to see, it's, there are sorts of European marabou, and they take the fire out, and you don't have the burn anymore. Or for example, you have a zona, and they carry you on their back and the zona is gone. You are looking like me as if I was crazy, I know. But, <laughs> but uh, what's the name in English? De rebouteux. Healing. The, yeah, healing people, yeah. Heal, healers, 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 which, which is in a way. And uh, there is that, that tradition in Basque country. Of course, it's probably psychological, especially for the zona, because it, 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 it's very hard to cure with uh, regular medicine, let's say. But if you, if you really believe in what's going to happen in the healing process, it, it very often works. And, and Rose, Rose is also very reluctant to believe in these things, but she sees that some things are happening with her hands. She's very electrical with people. She's, uh, and, um, and because we don't know what to do with this planet, we don't know what to do with what we are trying to conceive as crisis, again, I think it's a global state uh, of the world. We don't know what to do. We are powerless. We feel powerless. And her hands tell her something. In all of my novels, there is something about animals, about strange bodies, about ghosts sometimes. They are not exactly fantastic novels, but they are on the edge because people feel so powerless that they have to, to try something else magical thinking also. So the book goes on the borders of magical thinking at, at some moments, yeah. And she knows that as a psychologist, I've, I've been a psychoanalyst myself, and you can do, in my part in, in psychoanalysis, you are not even allowed to touch the people, just, you know, shaking hands. And with the COVID, you couldn't shake hands anymore, nothing. So, so but her, she, she treats children, and she allows herself to to touch them, to feel them, to, and it does them good. So she's a little bit on the margin of things. And that's, how, that's the way she's going to cope with also this, when she meets the refugees, because she doesn't know at all what to do. Mm. No, maybe that's the ultimate symptom of capitalism and, and the sort of uh, state we are in, of existential crisis at least. Mm that we are so disconnected both from our body, bodies but also from our spiritual sort of grounding. Yes. And, and, and that connectedness could also be the healing in a, in a yes. societal way. I, I'm, when I write a novel, I always hope that you, the readers, will, will do a part of the, of the novel with me. I mean, I don't explain you too many things. I want you to, to get your opinion on, on what's happening. And I, I also want you to think, what would I have done if I were Rose, you know? What, what would I have do, done? And um, I, my novels are very often a little bit ambiguous so that you take place in them. And I don't like to explain too much. Mm. But there are many answers in here and also many questions. Uh, and we don't have much time left. I think we have two more minutes. So what is your send-off message to the readers? And, and now they can, of course, go and, and get the book. But what My, would you like to share? I think we can act uh, on a very uh, realistic ground level. Uh, for example, I, um, this year, I, I'm, well, I, I'm, we can all do a little bit of things. I, I, I give. French lessons to some refugees in Paris, etc., which is extremely interesting for a writer. I mean, don't give if you're not going to be given in, in, in exchange. Don't think you can give without accepting something in exchange. Because if you, if you don't receive something in exchange, 
for me, um, my curiosity, for example, I, I, we have a lot of Yemenites at the moment in, in these classes. I love talking with them because they live in such a, another part of the world, the desert, etc. And, and to me, that's the gift I receive. It's extremely interesting. Don't do, be egoist. Be egoist when you give because it gives you more strength to give. So that's my only little idea. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, that was really fun. Um, yeah, deep. <laughs> it, it, it really hit me. Thank you so much for sharing and thank you for this amazing book and warm welcome to meet and greet with uh, Marie over there with the, with the books. Thank you.